two, one. That was a uh, Lauren Hill X Factor. So in 2001, uh, a British national named Richard Reed uh, got on a plane uh, and Richard Reed changed the way people fly forever. Richard Reed was a shoe bomber. Got on a plane, tried to de detonate a shoe. And from now on, everybody has to put their shoes in the bin. That single act changed the way we fly forever. Um, so now, unless you have pre-check or global entry or any other pre-screening mechanism, you got to put your shoes in the bin. I said, and I meant, and I said this a couple of months ago when it happened, Will Smith's slap changed uh, live performance. Uh, it wasn't just his slap, it was the, the America and the world's reaction to it. There were a lot of people who felt like that was appropriate, that it should have happened. There were a lot of people that, that thought he was a hero for slapping somebody because they told a joke he didn't like. And less than uh, almost a month later, another, another comic, another high-profile pro comic in a high-profile venue was attacked by somebody who didn't like what he said. And this is going to happen all over the country. It is because people uh, have given a tacit agreement that that was appropriate behavior. Now, it's interesting. You couldn't do that at your job. You could attack somebody at your job because they said something you didn't like. You couldn't do it at school. If a child does it at school, there's a zero tolerance policy. But a lot of people reacted in a way that let society know in general that that was appropriate behavior, that you should be able to do that. Rather than staying home and not hearing things you don't want to, things that could offend you, not going to venues that potentially offend you, you have decided, this society has decided, a large part of it, that that was appropriate. Not only was it appropriate, but it was to be lauded. That is a Pandora's box that cannot be op un uh, that can't be unopened. It is where we are now. Because now, first it was the protests, and then it was the, the emails, and then it was the boycotts, and then it was the hashtags, and now it's actually escalated to physical violence. If you don't like a com comedian, you don't like an entertainer, you don't like what they say, but society in general has said, a lot, a great deal of society has said that it is okay, it's appropriate behavior to attack somebody. And that's just not dangerous for the artist, that's dangerous for the people. Dave Chappelle could have got hurt last night. He could have got killed last night. You don't know what's going to happen. That man came on stage armed. And you said a large percentage of this audience thought it was no big deal. And less than six, less than four, five weeks later, another high-profile comedian was attacked at a profile venue. And you cannot say that that act did not foment an idea uh, that that made people a great a great many people think that that was appropriate behavior. Well, they shouldn't be talking like this. Well, I don't like it. Stay home. You don't have to, I tell you what, you have the ultimate choice. You can decide where to go, who to listen to, and who not to listen to. You, you, can, you, you are your own one-man cancellation, a one-woman cancellation. It's like a buffet. You go to the buffet, if you want something, you pick it up, if you don't, move on. But that single act, I said it then, and I meant it. That's not a coincidence. You think it's a coincidence two of the greatest comics that ever lived got attacked by somebody because they said they, somebody said something they didn't like? Those, those things have come. We are called African-Americans right now because in 1987, Jesse Jackson said that that's what we should be called. That's the power of one man doing an act. Donald Trump right now fomented a lot of violence by the things he said. He didn't have to perpetrate it. He talked and, and fomented an idea that it was appropriate to do something, and they attacked the Capitol. And this is the environment we're in now. Now comedians, uh, some are afraid to go out. People are hiring extra security. Clubs are hiring extra security because of that single act. Now, comedy was under attack anyway. It most certainly did not need somebody who, 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 who was tantamount to an enemy of comedy, to an enemy of an art form, because you didn't like something somebody said. And you have a whole bunch of sycophants. Not everybody, certainly not everybody's going to do that, but there are some that will. Like that very night, there was someone who tweeted, and it wasn't, obviously it wasn't the person who attacked Dave that night. It was someone who, uh, who had an Instagram post, and Dave, you're next. And that person, and, and he showed Will slapping uh, Chris, and he said, come for my trans homies again. Now, obviously it wasn't the person that attacked Dave, but that person had 10,000 re retreats and 62,000 likes. That idea is out there. There were so many people. You're going to be next. Be, be careful out there. How many uh, 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 tweets and messages do you get right now as a comedian? You, you uh, Be careful. You know, everybody's crazy. You know, be careful. That idea was fomented by a simple, thoughtless act. Much like the shoe bomber, uh, we have to take our shoes off. Now we have to take extra precautions, not just because of the slap, but because of people's attitude about it. When have you ever seen a police officer see a, a crime happen and then leave it up to the victim whether they press charges or not? They, they leave it up to the victim to press charges, but they don't leave it up to the victim where they're going to make arrest. Nothing happened. Society saw nothing happen. They saw that man was a hero. And all of a sudden, this is how we act. This is appropriate behavior.
Now that job, now people's job is more dangerous and more expensive. I said it would happen, and less than a month later, it happened to another great comedian. Because somebody can't take a joke. And if you can't take a joke and you got to get upset, what is wrong with staying home? What is wrong with deciding you're not going to, you can control your environment. You can make it as clean or as loud or as quiet as you wanted to. I don't care what society says in general. When we were growing up, you can't put your hands on somebody just because you don't like something they say. I don't care what they say on Twitter and Instagram. I don't care what Will got away with. He should have, he shouldn't have got away with it. But that dude who came up on stage, I bet it, I, I guess he's a rapper, but I know his arm is wrapped up now. If he's doing bars, it's behind bars. Society said that that was appropriate behavior. Everything is, is antithetical to everything we learn. Everything we learn. You don't put your hands on the right. You don't like something, you don't like something somebody say, you walk away. All of a sudden, because somebody didn't like a joke, it has made an art form that was already, I, I think, under attack, even further under attack. He's opened the box and it's become decidedly more dangerous to tell a joke because somebody in the audience might take offense to it and try to do something because they saw somebody get away with it. That's a little note from the GED section. We've got the jazz report coming up in 15 minutes. It's the D.L. Hugo Show.